In this video, I want to look at deriving Stirling's formula. So what Stirling's formula tells us is that if you have the factorial function and factorial, then as n gets very large, uh, this function right here can be roughly approximated uh, by this, square root 2 pi n times n over e all raised to the n. So this is kind of interesting because we have, we have n to the n, uh, which is a really fast function, being being tamed by e to the minus n with the square root n out in front. And so, so this is an interesting result that actually comes up quite a bit. And so it's good to understand where this comes from. Uh, okay, uh, so how are we going to do this? Well, uh, last time what we uh, what we learned about was Laplace's method. And what uh, the way that Laplace's method works was that we said that if we had a, an integral of this form right here, uh, integral a to b, e to the minus m, f of x dx, where this m is very large, and this function f of x has some well-defined global minimum, uh, then this can be approximated, this can be approximated by a Gaussian integral. And uh, the value of that integral being uh, e to the minus m f of x naught times square root 2 pi over m f double prime of x naught. So this is this is our approximation for uh, this function or th this integral right here, assuming that m is very large and f has some some nice global minimum. Okay, uh, so so that's that. Um, now let's look at the gamma function or or the uh, the generalized factorial function. So we know that uh, the gamma function gamma of n is equal to integral zero to infinity x to the n minus 1 e to the minus x dx and gamma of n plus 1 is equal to n factorial so n factorial is equal to integral 0 to infinity x to the n e to the minus x dx okay well we want to use Stirling's or, or, or we want to use Laplace's method on this integral right here but this isn't in the same form as this integral right here and so we need to uh, we need to force that to be true, um, and so I'm going to do that by uh, rewriting this x to the n as e to the log xn. And if we do that, what we get is that uh, this is uh, e to the log xn minus x dx. Uh, and this this term right here is, is uh, n log x, right? Because we can from our log properties we can pull down the n. e to the n log x minus x dx. Okay, now we see that in the limit where n is very, very large, um, which is the limit that we're interested in for Stirling's formula, then then this approximation starts to work, right? Because uh, we know that, uh, that this, this n out in front is going to give us uh, some, some very large number times this function right here. And then in this function, log x minus x, uh, looks a little bit like, like this. If we plot it, if we plot it, then we see that it looks like this. Uh, it looks it looks like this. And this function right here, we can see, uh, is going to be the type of thing that we can approximate as a Gaussian, especially as n gets large. So, um, so this integral is of the right form. All we need to do now is just figure out, first of all, what the uh, where the location of the uh, maximum is. So we get our x naught, and then we have to evaluate the second derivative. And so. And so let's do that. So we can find the maximum by taking the derivative, setting it equal to zero. So if we take the derivative, uh, n log x minus x, and we enforce this guy's equal to zero. Well, if we take the, uh, well, this is the same as n over x minus one equals zero. So we can see that x, uh, x equals n corresponds to the global minimum. So we want to expand around n. Okay, uh, we also want to find the second derivative of this function right here. Uh, so if we take two derivatives, so d squared dx squared of n log x minus x, what's going to happen? This x is going to drop out, and then we're going to have uh, n log x differentiate that one time. You have n over x. A second time you have minus n over x squared. Okay, and, and the minus sign makes sense because this is, this is concave down. Okay, uh, so we're, we're 
so we've done it. We're, we're ready to plug this in. And what, what do we get when we plug it in? n factorial is approximately equal to, and then what, what do we have here? We have uh, e, e to the minus uh, m f of x naught. Uh, that's going to be equal to, um, that's going to be equal to n log n minus n times square root 2 pi divided by uh, m f double prime of x naught. f double prime of x naught is n over n over x squared evaluated at n. Uh, that's 1 over n. So we have uh, this guy right here. And we can simplify this guy. And we exactly get uh, we exactly get this expression right here. And so we've done it. We've, we've proven Sterling's formula. And, and, and the way we did it was just by uh, approximating our gamma function integral to be a Gaussian integral. And just that one assumption, just that one approximation was able to give us this interesting behavior uh, of the gamma function for large n. I think I'll stop here. Uh, in the next video, I'm going to look at a new way of defining the gamma function using an infinite product. And we'll see there that Sterling's formula plays a very important part uh, in understanding why that works. Uh, so I hope to see you in that video.